Vegas, both of these teams are. It's USC looking to lock up the number two seed, up 55 to 39 over Arizona State. Davis catches at the elbow. Sun Devils ended that quarter on a 7-0 run. SC hasn't hit a bucket in two plus minutes, and that drought continues as Big B gets the miss there. Rebound Novosu. Well, the catalyst for that 7-0 run by Arizona State was the fact that USC continues to take a lot of long jumpers, which are leading to some runouts and transition opportunities for Arizona State. It's Natalie Novosu over to Chris. She's had the hot hand today for the Sun Devils. Brown. Picked up by Davis on the switch, just four to shoot, Nova Sale. Now Sosa, a long three, she got it. The senior from Brazil on senior day with the long triple. Buckets, Isidora Sosa is known for that. There's several games in which she's hit buzzer beaters or distance threes. If you need to get somebody the ball as the clock's winding down, get it to Isidora Sosa. Big B tries to answer, can't do so. Rebound secured by Sosa. This is a player who's battled injuries, didn't even know if she'd be able to play this year. It's a beautiful article written by Jayla French, one of the fine students here at Arizona State in the Cronkite News, about Sosa and her journey. Wants to go back to Brazil to be a coach there and give young ladies the opportunity that she had coming over here to the States to get a free education and play hoop. A great example of betting on yourself. Sosa knew her own body, knew that she wanted to continue to be able to compete at this collegiate level in the Pac-12, and has been such a huge addition to this Arizona State Ball Club. The coaching staff raves about her basketball IQ, and it's on display every time that she's on the floor. Trojans up by 13. Padilla barking out instructions, finds Watkins on the wing. There's Forbes with the catch and hop. Watkins off the Iverson cut, can't get it. They go over to Davis. Davis working against Sosa. Stops, tries to jump hook, no, and the rebound there. Again, taken by Sosa. It's the lead pass underneath, Magalico couldn't get it. And Watkins back the other way. Arizona State continues to have several nice defensive possessions. Magalico another board here. Arizona State getting the stops. He's trying to cash in on this end. Browns tries the three, but that one grazes his side of the rim. Watkins, the runner. Trying to go high off the glass there, nothing doing. Rebound Novacell. You saw Watkins on that play. She had four defenders within three to four feet from her. They were not going to let Watkins go one-on-one -on -one and get to the rim. Here's Chris. Novacell. Ice Brown had that fantastic finish to end the third quarter. This time rejected by Watkins. And they say last touch Arizona State, so it'll be USC basketball. Ice has done a nice job of attacking the paint. One of the things that she will have to continue to work on is that mid-range game. She may not be able to get to the rim to finish, but if she gets a floater, develops a floater in her game, that'll be a nice addition to her artillery. Davis goes high, low, Marshall underneath, can't get it. But a whistle and a foul, so that'll send Rhea Marshall back to the foul line, the 70% foul shooter. Great work on the low block by Rhea Marshall. The defender was coming over the high side. She did a great job of letting her teammate know that she had a mismatch on the low block. Marshall now 30 career double-doubles. Five in her last eight games with her efforts here today. You see Lindsey Gottlieb talking to her backcourt of Padilla and Juju Watkins. So Marshall cashes in. The lead is back to 15 for USC. Chris. Lost the handle, stayed with it. Magalico, the offensive rebound, off balance, falling away. And the rebound is off to Rhea Marshall. Magalico's done a nice job of bringing energy for Arizona State. Crashing the board, running the floor, defending. Force. Looking for Watkins and Novacell in there. And he'll get it for a foul. Good effort by Novacell. Just 
grabbed Watkins on that Iverson cut just a little bit, but was doing a nice job trying to get in the pass lane and create a deflection. 6.21 left. Fourth quarter here from Tempe. Sun Devils not going down without a fight. SC trying to secure the number two seed, and there's Padilla with the beautiful kiss. Nice footwork by Kayla Padilla. Nice step through move, step back, creating space. A little Kevin Durant, Dirk Nowitzki on that follow through. Second field goal of the game for Padilla to transfer from Penn. Brown, long two. Brown did a really nice job, was patient using that Magalico screen. Magalico set a great screen and created space for the step back pull up. Watkins tried to step through. Finds the offensive rebound, though, however. Forbes. Back over to Watkins. A lot of standing around by USC. Their offense isn't fluid as it was in the first half. Watkins on the ISO, and she gets to the cup. Nice win you have a Watkins that can bail you out. Again, USC's half-court offense has been a little bit stagnant here in the second half. Sosa, the nice move, and Sosa gets to the cup. Nice hesitation move by Sosa. Got Rhea Marshall up out of her defensive stance and created the space that she needed to be able to finish at the rim. Sosa now with nine, the former junior college All-American. Davis. Marshall had good positioning. They couldn't find it. Right, Sosa's helping off of the high post. Forbes, the runner off glass. And that's another threat that this SC offense has. Mackenzie Forbes, she can get going in a hurry. Here's Magalico against Marshall, and she got that one up and high over the outstretched arm of the tenacious Trojan shot blocker. And that offense opportunity was created by Magalico running the floor with aggression. She sprinted her lane, was one on one on the low block. Approaching four to play here. Juju with the jab step. Double team comes, she spins out of it. She'll try a three. Rebound tipped around. Davis still fighting for it. Caitlin Davis able to get the rebound, and she draws the foul, working against two different Sun Devils. Tremendous hustle there by Caitlin Davis. Well, and that was Caitlin's fifth offensive rebound. She's fierce on the offensive boards. Here, Sousa with a little hesitation and a nice finish at the rim. And then that's followed up by Forbes over Sousa. We'll be back here at Desert Financial Arena. And then Diana Trossi, just the presence. As soon as Diana stepped on the floor, the presence that she had and how she made all of her teammates better. Here's Juju on the seal underneath. She gets the bucket and the foul. Watkins now with 25, also 12 boards, six double-double of the season. Again, at 6-2, understanding the play, Jada Simmons had a mismatch in size, but knows exactly where to get to on her spots on the floor and the ability to finish with contact. Made with a lot of adjustments in her college career. They've adjusted her nutrition. It's really been a team effort with the nutritionist and the strength and conditioning team to keep Juju running at premium performance. Lindsey Gottlieb says she burns fuel like a Maserati. <laughs> she is a Maserati for sure. And we talked to Juju before the game and just asked her how she developed this mature, pro-ready game. And she talked a lot about her high school coaches, her father getting out in the court, working with her, and watching a lot of basketball. And she shouted out Alicia Komaki, the head coach at Sierra Canyon, out in the San Fernando Valley. Her cousin Tracy, who works out with her as well. There's Juju with the skip pass. There's Forbes, the spin move, blocked by the rim there, and Sosa there for the board. It's really been a team effort. And Brown, get into the cup. What can Brown do for you? Again, you see how fearless Brown is attacking the paint. There are three defenders there, but she didn't mind it. She knows she can go ahead and finish with contact in traffic. And he got lead. Looking to make a line change next time we have a stoppage. 16 point lead here for USC. Davis. Bounce pass out to Padilla. 
Approaching two and a half left in this one. Marshall going to work. The fall away in the lane. <laughs> no, that was a thing of beauty from Ray of Marshall. Would the love nice to touch. Yeah, I would love to see Marshall do that more often. One on one on the low block. The defender was right behind her. Beautiful turnaround jumper over her left shoulder. She has that capability to do that more consistently. They're going to need it in the tournament. So a timeout taken here by Lindsey Gottlieb. She wanted to make a substitution. So wholesale changes here for Gottlieb. How about this line? Rhea Marshall, 15 points, 15 rebounds, four offensive, and five blocks. That's a cool, pretty well-rounded game. Again, Rhea Marshall talked last year in the preseason about being a dominant rebounder and dominant defender, and that was on display today, in addition to a nice, versatile offensive game as well. Fifth time this year she's had 15 or more rebounds. Marshall, a perfect example, according to Lindsey Gottlieb, of a player who doesn't really know how good she is. And that's sort of been the challenge as his coaching staff has, has tried to push her. They've challenged her to be a little bit more efficient on the offensive end as well, but immensely talented. And we, we talk a lot about Juju, but you can't really talk about Juju without mentioning Rhea Marshall when you talk about the L.A. basketball scene and, and Marshall sort of paving the way, right? Being an L.A. player, McDonald's All-American, highly recruited, staying at home at USC when it was an unpopular thing to do. Well, one of the things she wanted to do was be part of bringing this program back to the places it had been under Lisa Leslie, Tina Thompson, and certainly Cheryl Miller and the McGee sisters before that. Ray Marshall has that ability. She can be that dynamic and dominant post player and needs to do it much more consistency. You see she has that kind of Southern California laid back demeanor on the floor, but she knows she can be a dominant player and they're gonna need to see that more often. We, we can be a little California cool <laughs> at times. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, right? Nothing wrong with that. I think you said uh, it's not new to you, right? <laughs> 68 to 50, our score is Brown knifes into that with the jumper. On the floor now for USC, Big B Samuels, Darius McColo, and Akunwafo as Lindsey Gottlieb has taken all of her starters out. 90 seconds left in this one. Here's Darius to transfer from UCLA. Picked up by Crisp. Trojans. Just seconds away now from clinching that number two seed in next week's tournament. As here's a steal from Brown. Brown on the run, the layup, no, won't go. But she'll be at the line to shoot two. One of the most fascinating stories, maybe my favorite story of the weekend. Talking to Jalen Brown a couple of days ago. Her nickname is Ice. Yes. She said it was by pure it, it was only the way that she learned to, to lay the ball up. She started playing basketball around fifth grade, and when she first laid the ball up, she finger rolled. It wasn't intentional. That, that was just the way it naturally came out. And ever since then, they were calling her ice. And she said, who is this? They're comparing me to this George guy from, from back in the day, from the ABA in the NBA, the Iceman George Gervin. But that nickname from the DMV has stuck with her. And uh, here she is now playing for Natasha Adair. They're re reunited in, in a sense. Uh, Brown used to attend Coach Adair's camps when Coach Adair was at uh, the University of, University of Georgetown. We know the, the quality of, of ballers that come out of the DMV. We saw Kiki Rice the other night. So Kiki Rice game. the other night. We got Angel McCautry from Baltimore that went to Louisville, similar route to Jalen Brown as well. Definitely so. 51 seconds left in this one. Shout out to our crew, Angela Taylor, stage manager. Not Angela Taylor, you're Angela Taylor. <laughs> Brandy we, Major, our stage manager. Yeah, fan, phenomenal stage manager with uh, some. Blake Neiman helping us out here. on stats. I know you wear a lot of hats, Angela, but. but not that way. I didn't not, bring not the that. chocolate like Brandy did. <laughs> so I. Brandy hooked it up for yes, sure. Leah Samuels at the foul line. Our TD, Graham Carpenter, Michael May on audio, along with Kevin Sweet, video Ke Kevin Sweet as well, Jason Cope on video, baby party. 
Robert McGahee, our Red Hat, Amy Kelso, the unit manager, uh, Cameron, Darren Pierce, David Tellez, Cooper Lane, Thomas Rogers, Chris Green, and Dominique Duddleson. On utility, our PA, Mahir Sinhasen, and Chase Compass, our EIC. Dominique Darius going to get back to the free throw line. On tape, Raymond Rodriguez, all-in-one, Op Studio, Sean Serrano. Our fantastic crew making everything happen for you. Yeah, thank you, folks. We've got a great crew here at the Pac-12 Network. And one of the things that I know is we have our last regular season Pac-12 game here at Desert Financial Arena is women's basketball is in really good hands. The future is extremely bright as we look around this arena. A lot of women's basketball fans, a lot of fans ASU football players, et cetera, that came out to see Juju Watkins, and she was what everyone expects her to be. But the future is bright. There's a lot of talented players across the, the conference and across the country. It's a block underneath by Akinwafo, but another foul called as Chris hits the deck. Fouls on the Trojans, number 34, Maurice Akinwafo. Second personal foul, 14 foul. You see Juju Watkins there. If you haven't caught it on the USC YouTube page, phenomenal story about her and her family. She's from the Watts community of Los Angeles. Her great-grandfather, Ted Watkins, a pioneer in that community, along with her grandfather, Tim. But her great-granddad, Ted, started the Watts Labor Community Action Committee. Has done just some great, wonderful things. We got a park named after him in the city of Watts, so I encourage you all to check that out. It was something promoted by USC for Black History Month. It's called Don't Move, Improve. Don't Move, Improve. You know, some of you youngsters may think it started with Nipsey Hussle, but it didn't. Ted Watkins was doing work. And that one goes final. 